Yes, Chicago. First in violence, deepest in dirt, loud, lawless, unlovely, ill-smelling, irreverent, new. An overgrown gawk of a village, the tough among cities, a spectacle for the nation. I give Chicago no quarter, and Chicago asks for none. Good, they cheer, when you find fault. Give us the gaff. We deserve it, and it does us good. They do deserve it. Lying low beside a great lake of pure cold water, the city has neither enough nor good enough water. With the ingenuity and will to turn their sewer, the Chicago River, and make it run backwards and upwards out of the lake, the city cannot solve the smoke nuisance. With resources for a magnificent system of public parking, it is too poor to pave and clean the streets. They can balance high buildings on rafts floating in mud, but they can't quench the stench of the stockyards. The enterprise which carried through a world's fair to a world's triumph is satisfied with 2,500 policemen for 2 million inhabitants and 196 square miles of territory, a force so insufficient and inefficient that it cannot protect itself, to say nothing of handling mobs, riotous strikers, and the rest of that lawlessness which disgraces Chicago. Though the city has an extra-legal system of controlling vice and crime, which is so effective that the mayor has been able to stop any practices against which he has turned his face, the panel game, the hat game, wine rooms, safe blowing, though gambling is limited, regulated and fair, and prostitution orderly, though in short, through the power of certain political and criminal leaders, the mayor has been able to make Chicago, criminally speaking, honest. Burglary and cruel holdups are tolerated. As government, all this is preposterous.